Hello class, today we're going to start, start this video on the new unit chapter, unit 15 on conic sections. And conic sections are a basically types of curves that are based off of the intersection of two objects. The intersection of double naped cones, and as you can see here we have um, three different um, copies of double naped cones, which means they're cones that intersect at the vertex and the right cylindrical cones, and then the intersection of the cones and uh, planes. And as you can see here, we have uh, light purple um, rectangular shapes that represent planes. And what happens when you intersect a plane with a double nape cone? Well, it depends on how you inter um, make the intersection. If you intersect it this way so that the plane passes through um, one of the napes, at the same slant, um, what you have is called a parabola, and you guys have seen that sh curve shape more than once. If you intersect it so that the plane is per uh, parallel to the base of the cones, you have what's called a circle, which again you're familiar with as well. But if you intersect the plane so that it intersects um, in this such way, up here in the top uh, cone, we have what's called an ellipse or an oval. And if you have it so that the plane intersects in such a way where it's perpendicular to the base or parallel to the um, axis of symmetry of the double nape cones, you have what's called a hyperbola. And in this case, it starts the topic of conic sections or conics for short. We're only going to talk about one particular type of conic sections in this video, um, but uh, stay tuned and we're going to go in depth for the other conic sections as well. Now I like this image because it kind of pretty much summarizes all in one picture um, the different conic sections and we're going to come back to this um, later on um, in, uh, in other videos but I want to focus on the parabola today and you guys are very familiar with parabolas and what you remember from parabolas is there are two very important components of a parabola. There's the vertex which um, where the parabola changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa and then there is the axis of symmetry which is the line through which um, the, the, the that passes through the vertex or the vertex passes through that line of symmetry and the thing about the line of symmetry is that if you fold the parabola on the line of symmetry the one side of the parabola fits perfectly on the other side and so um, we're going to take a look at two other important context concepts and components of a parabola that you haven't really discussed before. So let's take a look at the notes on page 129. So we have to add these two new contents and these two new words or concepts or components. One is the focus and the focus is a fixed point that lies on the axis of symmetry of a parabola and the other one is a directrix which is a line that is perpendicular to the axis of symmetry of a parabola. And these two are of note, um, and we're going to see why. But one thing I want to point out, and you might want to add this onto your notes, is that neither the focus nor the directrix is on the um, parabola or passes through the parabola, okay? Like the vertex and the axis of symmetry do. And that's very important. So, so um, by definition, a parabola is the collection of all points in the plane that are the exact same distance from the focus to the directrix. And that's the same thing that you need to understand and have that definition rock solid in your brain. Okay, so here we have an example of two parabolas. Here are the, here is the focus. As you can see, it's not on the parabola. And then here is the directrix. And as you can see, the directrix does not pass through the parabola. And of course, if you haven't already noticed, the axis of symmetry and the vertex, which do pass through the parabola. And so by definition, every point on this um, parabola, you can say two things about, well, one thing about it. Number one is that the point is the same distance from the focus as it is from the line, which is the directrix. For each one of them, even though the distances may be different for different points, the distance from the focus to the point is going to be the same as the distance from the point to the directrix. And as we can see here in a different type of parabola that opens up left or right, the same holds. The distance from a point on the parabola 
to the focus is going to be the exact same as the distance from the focus to the directrix. Now, now you're looking here and you're seeing, oh, I remember seeing parabolas that look like the one on the left, but I don't see a lot of parabolas that look like that. And there's a reason why. And the main reason why is that the one on the left is a, we can describe this by a function because um, it passes the vertical line test. But the one on the right does not, is not a function and it will not pass the vertical line test. So we can't represent this in terms of a function, but we can represent both of those these in terms of equations. It's important to know that if it is a function, and that means the directrix has to be horizontal, and I can represent the equation of this line as y equals p. And in this case, where it's not a function, the directrix um, is a vertical line and it can be represented by this equation, x equals p, where in this case, p is the x-intercept. Oops, wrong directrix. p is the x-intercept and in this case, p is the y-intercept. So we're going to take a look at ways to represent both of these in terms of an equation, not necessarily a function. So let's take a look at a way to represent these parabolas. Now we're going to take a look at the very simple case where the vertex is at the origin, 0, 0. And if the vertex is at the origin, then it makes life a little bit simpler because um, we can pick a point for the focus where the point for the focus is actually on the um, y axis. In other words, the director six horizontal. And in this case, we can pick a point in this case where the uh, axis of symmetry is, is vertical. So it's important to remember that since the axis of symmetry is perpendicular to the directrix, if the axis of symmetry is vertical, the, the directrix is horizontal. If the axis of symmetry is horizontal, then that means that the directrix is vertical. And that means we're going to have two different expressions. And a way to represent, again, the um, directrix, if it's a horizontal directrix, is in the form of y equals some number. And in this case, if the focus is at the point on the y-axis of 0p, then the directrix is at the point y equals negative p. And that's because they have to be the same distance from the origin. And if the origin is at p, uh, I mean, if the vertex is at 0, 0 and the focus is at 0, P, then that means the directrix is on the opposite side of um, the vertex and is at negative P and vice versa over here when you have a vertical directrix as well. So this is the equation um, that we're going to, it's very important for you to memorize or take a look at. This is in the case of a horizontal directrix, which means the graph is opening up or down. And here is a case in the equation of a vertical directrix and that's when the parabola is opening up left or right. So um, in order to figure out what the equation is, is to complete the equation we need to figure out what P is. And your book talks about it instead of using P it uses A. But P is the point um, with the y-intercept for the uh, horizontal directrix opening up or down parabola and P is the x-intercept for the um, vertical directrix um, parabola opening up left and right. And therefore, once you find P, you'll be able to identify the focus and the directrix for all of that. So let's take a look at an example um, where we're going to graph the equation of a parabola if they just give us the equation. Um, and here is the example, x is equal to 1 half y squared, and we, they want us to identify where is the focus, where is the directrix, and where is the axis of symmetry. Well, I've, automatically I know that the, the, the vertex is at 0, 0 because of the fact that um, it looks just like the form on the notes, page 127. But which form? The form where the parabola opens up or down, or the form where the parabola opens up left or right? Well, regardless, we first have to get the um, variable that's squared by itself. If you remember over here on the equation, it's either x squared equals or y squared equals. So let's go ahead and get rewrite the equation so that it's in either x squared equals or y squared equals. And since we have a y squared, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 so I can get rid of the 1 half. And so I end up with 2x is equal to y squared. 
And so then I take a look over at um, my notes and I see that if it's y squared, then that means that I can um, identify that p in this case has to be one half because four times p is two. And since four times p is two, then that means that p has to be one half. And if p is one half, then we're halfway done because now we can be able to identify where our focus is and our directrix because they're both based off of p. So let's take a look. In this case, because it's y squared, that means that we, we're going to have a a focus that's on the x-axis, which means we're going to have a vertical directrix. So the focus is at p0, and since we found that p is equal to 1 half, the focus is, uh, is 1 half comma 0, which means it's on the x-axis. And since p is 1 half, the directrix, which is going to be a vertical line, is equal to x equals negative p. So that means the directrix is of the form equation x equals negative 1 half. And because um, the, the directrix is vertical, that means the axis of symmetry is going to be um, horizontal, which means it's going to be the x-axis. And uh, um, we can see that because it passes through the vertex. And so we're going to draw the parabola by making points that we can easily identify with that information. So we know that the vertex is the origin. And we know that um, the focus is the point 1 half 0. And we know that the directrix is on the opposite side of the vertex from. Uh, so therefore, the, the uh, directrix is, at, is a vertical line at x equals negative 1 half. And so now all we need to do is figure out values that are on the problem that their exact distance around. Well, we know that because the, the uh, directrix is vertical that the um, graph will open up left or right. And because the focus is on the positive version of the x-axis, positive side, that means the parabola opens up to the right. If the focus was on the other side, then the parabola would open up to the left. And so um, we only use positive x values to represent our um, points. And we can just start plugging in a value into the equation. If you remember what our equation looks like, our equation looks like um, y squared is equal. OK, so as we can see here, if I the equation is y squared is equal to 2x. So if I just pick x as 1, then y squared is equal to 2 times 1, which is 2. So then y squared has to be equal to the square root of 2 plus or minus, and we can easily figure that out by a graphing calculator, I mean, or a standard calculator. So in this case, um, if I want to figure out what the square root of 2 is, it's 1.414. So that means my x coordinate is 1, my y coordinate is 1.41, or my y coordinate is negative 1.41. Same thing if I let x represent 2, so that means y squared is equal to 4, which means the square root of y squared is y is equal to 2, so we have plus or minus 2. And you can figure out those two points easily. All right, that's it. I know this video is long, but um, sorry. <laughs>